A happy Thanksgiving to everybody watching. This is Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you out there are having an amazing day with your families. We still have to talk some birds, though, even though it's the holiday, because there's plenty to get to on today's show. I want to defend Nick Sirianni and his celebration in the tunnel and on the field after that Monday night incredible win against the Kansas City Chiefs. We have more Shaq Leonard rumors from Diana Rossini, NFL insider formerly of ESPN, now for The Athletic. And we're going to talk about a big reason why the Eagles defense had success against Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and the Chiefs pitching that second half shutout. First, show some love to the channel by subscribing. And if you want informative, entertaining, insightful Eagles coverage every single day, even on the holiday, even at the crib, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. So Nick Sirianni video reactions range from all over the place, right? Nick Sirianni is getting shredded on social media. There's a clip of him in the Arrowhead Stadium tunnel saying, Hey, I don't hear shit anymore, Chiefs fans. See ya. And the Nick Sirianni video reactions range from, Nick Sirianni is a D-bag. Nick Sirianni is classless. Nick Sirianni is a tool. Classic Philadelphia Eagles behavior. What an unprofessional move from a head coach in the National Football League. This Sirianni guy, he's a clown. As head coach in the NFL, you have to have integrity. Oh, can't wait to see Nick Sirianni and the Eagles get humbled later. It'll come around. And what goes around comes around. Sirianni celebrating like this after a regular season win? He's so phony. There's a code to sportsmanship. Coaches should not act like that. Look, and my Twitter mentions have featured all of that. Nowadays, people just always want to find something to be mad about. Outrage society. The NFL is a high leverage, high pressure, high stress job. There were 29 million people who tuned in to Eagles Chiefs on Monday Night Football. Most watched Monday Night Football broadcast since 1996. Nick Sirianni is elated, excited, emotional. After what was a crazy game, hostile environment, bad weather, down by 10, offense couldn't do jack, and they come back from 10 points to beat Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and the defending Super Bowl champions. And according to Twitter, people aren't allowed to be excited and show emotion after a huge critical win, which keeps the Eagles in the number one seed. NFL best record at 9-1, and one, by the way. Sirianni a big reason for why they've had so much success the last two and a half years. Year one, rebuilding year, made the playoffs after a slow start. Year two, makes it to a Super Bowl, and now back-to-back, Nine and one seasons. People realize how difficult that is to do. Nick Sirianni puts his everything into this. He preaches family, togetherness. He preaches team. And that win, considering who it was up against and the history between these two teams, when Philadelphia, only back in February, suffered a crushing, heartbreaking loss when they gave up a 10-point, half-point 10-point halftime lead. And now you go back into their crib and you beat them to exact a little bit of revenge. Do people realize how much goes into a game like that? So Sirianni, after getting that dub, walking off the field, he's like, yes, we did it. We made a statement. But look, everybody always wants to hate on Philadelphia. And now everybody's hating on Nick Sirianni. And now... There are more reasons to hate the Philadelphia Eagles because of all of the success that they've been having, yet they're led by a quarterback who is as classy and as professional and buttoned up as they come, who Nick Sirianni has helped develop. It's a huge game for Philadelphia, starting the gauntlet of their schedule, which features a five-game stretch of Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys, Seahawks. You start off with the dub in that fashion? Shit. I'm going to be excited too. 
Fans chirp the players and the coaches from the stands. They talk all the shit that they want. But Sirianni can't chirp back? Oh, he did it in the tunnel. Out of sight. Nobody saw him. Soft. He did it once he had a covering over him. No, he didn't. He was on the field dapping up Eagles fans. How cool is that? The head coach oftentimes goes on the road. They have an incredible road record. It's difficult to win on the road in the NFL. He thanks the fans for coming to supporting the team. Because oftentimes they take over stadiums and make it a home environment. And you have the head coach going up into the stands in Washington, going up to the railing in Kansas City, everywhere he goes, and he's saying, thank you. Y'all made a difference. We appreciate you. That's the togetherness that I talk about. And the guy comes from a coaching lineage that's, has, that's had so much success at the college and high school level, and now he's flourishing in the NFL. He didn't do it out of sight with the covering over him. He was on the field saying, see ya, to Chiefs fans and dapping up Eagles fans. Now, people outside of Philly, they don't know that Sirianni on the road goes up to the stands to thank fans who spent their money to come support the team and show them love and say thank you. How cool is that? It's undefeated. So Nick Sirianni as a person, and I think context matters, especially when you're talking about knowing somebody, right? You can't just judge everybody. People do. People find success. They get hated on more. Because we just are quick to judge as people. In my opinion, when you look at Nick Sirianni, he's an emotional, passionate, real dude. And I appreciate him for that. I'm thankful on this Thanksgiving for Nick Sirianni. I want to have relationships with people, whether it's a girlfriend, a wife, a friend, coworker, family member, stranger who turns into a friend. I want to have relationships with people who are real, authentic. I want real ones, as we like to say on the show. Nick Sirianni is that. He's real, authentic, relatable, personable, friendly, honest. That's what I want in people, is that. So we need more people like Nick Sirianni, who have a personality, less dead fish, mundane, boring, arrogant, coach-speaking head coaches like Bill Belichick, sometimes Kyle Shanahan, who seem miserable and say like things in a condescending way to media members. Sirianni never does that. So I see why outside of Philadelphia, people would say something like this and why he's receiving so much hate. But people outside of Philadelphia don't understand that it just means more. Eagles football means more. It is a part of the lifestyle. People bleed green. But hey, that's why Philadelphia fans love to sing the song, No One Likes Us. We don't care. This city loves this football team. The Philadelphia Eagles are a way of life. You live and die with the midnight green. When they win, your day and week is better. When they lose, you're miserable and you don't want to talk to anybody. And work the next day sucks. This city is tough. This city is gritty. This city is passionate. It is real. It is authentic. And why I love Nick Sirianni is that he embodies that. The city and the fan base. And he is a perfect fit for this team. And he's a hell of a coach. Top five in the NFL right now. If we're judging it by success and wins, which is what it comes down to for a coach. I want it no other way for Nick Sirianni to be him and continue to be him and not give a damn what other people who don't understand think. D-bag, he's our D-bag then. Asshole, he's our asshole. I'm cool with it. Nick Sirianni, keep being you. Now coming up next here on the show, more rumors about Shaq Leonard. And by the way, let me know what you think about this down in the comments section. 
as well as why the Eagles' defense had success against Kansas City in that second half. First, today's Eagles now, presented by Prize Picks, largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America, and with our link, prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and our code CLNS, you get a $100 deposit match. And for this Thanksgiving slate today, going into a great weekend slate in the NFL, but also you can play more or less with NBA games, NHL games, college basketball, Major League Baseball when it's back, NHL, whatever. But the Thanksgiving slate of football and this weekend of football, really good slate. A couple of Thanksgiving specials I want to make you aware of that I like because you can win real money. Christian McCaffrey, more than a half rushing and receiving yard. All he has to do is pick up one yard on one carry. I'm sure the NFL leader in rushing yards is going to be able to do that. So mark that down and take that. And then Sam Howell and Micah Parsons, more than two and a half passing touchdowns and sacks. Sam Howell leads the NFL in passing yards. It's pretty wild. And Micah Parsons... Might be the leader for defensive player of the year. So I like that one as well. Sign up today. Link is available in the comment section right now. As for Shaq Leonard, real quick on him, Diana Rossini with this report that the former Colts linebacker, he cleared waivers on Wednesday. Now a free agent. We talked about him last night. Go back and watch the show. Has about 20,000 views right now. Thanks to everybody who watched. And she said, according to multiple league sources, he has options, does Leonard. Spent the first few seasons in Indy after signing that five-year, $98.25 million contract extension in 2021. But then injuries held him back. Rossini continues, now teams still in contention, like the Eagles, like the Cowboys, Vikings, and others, quote, collecting information on him. A league source said Leonard may may take his time in making a decision. So this Eagles interest in him is real. We did a whole breakdown on the player, what it could mean for this Eagles team on that video from yesterday. It's up on the channel. Go and check it out. But obviously with all the success that he's had, a lot of pedigree, three-time first-team All-Pro, four-time All-Pro, four-time Pro Bowler, first four years in the NFL. Lands that big contract since then. Three games last year, 70% of the snaps this year. Not great. And it's a back injury, a couple of back operations. So declining player, plus I think Nicholas Morrow and Zach Cunningham, very good options. Again, it's Thanksgiving. I know y'all are hanging out with your families. You're probably like, Chase, get on to the next story. We'll go back and watch the video. Great breakdown right there. All right. Uh, Big reason why the Eagles defense had success against the Chiefs. I want to round out with that. A little football analysis. Chop it up real quick. So getting Bradley Roby back in the slot, I think, did help stabilize things. I know that he was beat by Marquez Valdez-Scantling at the end of the game. Patrick Mahomes throwing that deep ball to him. Flat out drop. Would have been a touchdown. I love how a lot of people said, the game's over. If he catches that, still 144 on the clock. Yeah, and the Eagles are down by three. So with Jalen Hurts being the best quarterback in the NFL, most clutch when trailing or tied, Pretty confident that Hurts, who didn't get the opportunity to do that same thing in the Super Bowl, by the way, because of a garbage call, didn't get the ball back with enough time to actually put together a drive, I think that he has success in that scenario. Anyway, there was supposed to be safety help over the top. So that's not on Bradley Roby, by the way, if you go back and watch the design, the tape, the intention of that play. But getting Roby back, I thought, was huge. Sean Desai even said that. He said, I think it was great to get him back. I know he was eager to get back out, get his feet wet after not playing for a while. The conditioning, all that stuff is important. He did a good job. We just try to keep finding and building that combination of guys that we like back there by matchups week by week and who we like to present out there. And he's done a tremendous job for that. The combination that he talked about is the next point that I want to get to because I do think that is important as well. Because this year, with all of the injuries that have happened in that secondary, really starting in the preseason, from Zach McPherson, out for the year Achilles, Avante Maddox, Peck, Bradley Roby, Peck, who is replacing Maddox, who is already out and you're already thin at slot corner, to Darius Slay getting banged up, to having to trade for Kevin Byard, to having a safety rotation that has featured multiple starters and Reed Blankenship, Justin Evans, Terrell Edmonds not even on the team, 
Kevin Byard, what Tristan McCullum is in there at points. Like you're playing a lot of safeties too. Defensive line has been able to stay healthy, but linebackers, two IR stints for Nicobe Dean. Late additions of Zach Cunningham. Nicholas Morrow didn't even make the roster. You had to release him, sign him back to the practice squad. He's been really good. What's the point here? That combination that Sean Desai said, not a lot of continuity. And in almost every single game, the Eagles have had a different starting secondary this year. Against Kansas City was the first time that they've had their secondary at full strength. And keep in mind, Bradley Roby's first game was against the Rams and the Jets. Then he was out. He's played well. Darius Slay, James Bradbury on the outside. Bradley Roby in the slot. And then at safety, Reed Blankenship, Kevin Byard. First time all year that the Eagles have had those five secondary players all starting a game together. And finally, a pass defense that's been awful this year. You look at that and you say, hmm. Do we have something there with continuity, with playing with one another, with communication and the improvement of that? And if you match that up with the Eagles defensive line, Eagles defense could be really good. Again, I know that Mahomes' supporting cast isn't what it has been, and the drops did happen, but can we give credit to the Eagles defense as well? I mean, Jalen Carter, Josh Sweat, they were moving Mahomes off his spot throughout the night. He threw more than 40 times and averaged a career low, like 4.3 yards per completion. Think about how hard that is to do. So Sean Desai mentioned that as well. And he said, I think at every position, you love to have continuity. When the guys play with each other and play amongst each other and communicate with each other, they're hearing the same voices, feeding off each other. They play off each other. They communicate different tips and tendencies they see. If they're able to iron out those wrinkles and work off the momentum from that Chiefs game. Now with the Buffalo Bills, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, all coming to town. James Cook, good running back. Offense that's looking to get back on track after playing really well last week against a good Jets defense that beat the Eagles. Maybe we're starting to see a little bit of a change here for this Eagles defense and a big reason for that, health, finally. All right, appreciate y'all for watching the show. Really do appreciate it. Wanted to hop on the mic on this Thanksgiving. Be back every day up until the lead up to that Bills game. Um, not going anywhere, not traveling for Thanksgiving. So I'll probably be back here at the at-home setup, chopping it up, talking some birds. So be on the lookout. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on your notice. Therefore, whenever you get uh, a notification or whenever we push out a video, you'll be notified. And I'm not going to do the whole, what sides do you like? Power rank your sides. All I'll say, enjoy the food. Enjoy the company, enjoy the football, enjoy the drinks, and thanks for watching the show. Peace.